Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Deputy Chief Denise Richardson, and we thank you all for coming here today. First of all, our condolences to the families of the victims from this weekend. After these events, we know you all have a lot of questions, and we came here today to be available to you to answer those questions, all of the ones that we can. At this time, I'll turn the podium over to our mayor, Shirley Washington. Good afternoon. The incidents that we experienced this weekend were very traumatic. You never know how you'll react, respond, or feel to such incidents until they happen in your city. One thing that I can say in this situation is that our police officers were very responsive. I've spoken with people who were in the building at that time, and they said it seemed like police officers were in there within a minute, a minute or two. So we applaud our officers for that punctuality, that, that quick response that they gave. Right now, our hearts go out to the families of those who have lost lives and to those who were injured. We're going to do everything possible, everything within our power, to make sure that as we move forward, we will plan to prevent things of this nature from happening as best we can. We always say that we're stronger together. So all agencies in the city, the county, and the state are going to join forces with the agencies here in Pine Bluff to make Pine Bluff that safer community so that all of our children who come here to school can feel safe and their parents can feel that they're in a safer environment. We want to thank you all for your patience, for understanding, and we thank you most importantly for your prayers. Pray for us as we move our city forward and move beyond this situation. Thank you. My prayers are with you. Families, our citizens live here in Pine Bluff, in you know, Jefferson County, and the alumni that return home to UAPB. Pine Bluff police officers, Jefferson County, Fire Department, EMTs, outside agencies responded to the two main incidents, but there was so many events going on in Pine Bluff that was covered by the Pine Bluff police officers. They was everywhere within the city. There was a concert. There was parties. There was nightclub events, all protected by the men and women of the Pine Buff Police Department. There was two shootings. One occurred at 12:53 a.m. When the call came in, it was one of our officers. Zero response time. They was down the street, and they was inside the building taking care of the citizens of this town. One of our officers who responded had to use force. I will not take any questions on that. I will not make any other comments on that other than that's being handled by the Arkansas State Police. Another incident happened at University Avenue in Pullen. In less than 30 seconds, our officers were there on the scene, secured the citizens that was there. They began uh, rendering aid, both patrol and both detectives and our narcotic officers responded. There was no difference there. Fire department, the EMTs. This town is going to be protected by the people that you pay to do so. 
and as police chief, and my two of my deputy chiefs here, Deputy Chief Richardson, Deputy Chief Elliott, and I had worked on the plan, and that's where the response was as quick as they were. But there's something that we had been working on for about over a month, and that's a partnership with the alcohol, tobacco, and firearms agency. And as a result of these two shootings and other shootings that have occurred within our city, we are entering into a, a partnership. And that partnership will be explained by the agent in charge, Clayton R. Merrill. It's going to only help us to make this city safer for the residents here and the people that visit in here. We didn't get in this situation overnight, but we're going to correct it and we're going to make Pine Bluff safe for the citizens here and we're going to make Pine Bluff safe for the people that visit in Pine Bluff. And I promise you this, it's not going to take us a long time either. We're going to work together with other agencies. And I ask the citizens to bear with us and just allow us to do the job that you pay us to do. One of the young men that was shot at Pullen and University we recently re received a report from St. Vincent Hospital that he died. On the 17th at 6.47 p.m. I ask you to pray for that family. Pray for the other families. Pray for all of the families that have been injured. What happened here is happening all across this nation. Now I would like for Craig Bell to come forward. Hello, everyone. Uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the uh, victims of the shootings here. Uh, I'm the resident agent in charge for ATF <clears throat> that covers the uh, state of Arkansas out of Little Rock. Uh, like the chief said, we have been in talks for, I think it's probably been a couple months, uh, about bringing on a, a local officer detective to be a task force officer uh, with ATF. So what that'll do is it'll give them the resources that my office has to them on a local level. It'll be that conduit between the police department and the United States Department, United States uh, Attorney's Office and my office. So this will only help speed up the process, this will only help um, identify shooters, crime guns, and uh, make that, uh, that process more streamlined to my office to bring, to bring cases into the federal system. We're excited for the partnership and moving forward and thank you to the mayor and the chief for, for allowing this partnership to happen. As you know, both investigations is ongoing, but I will take questions. I will not. There was a couple that's critical uh, as far as the medical condition. That's the best I could tell you. Do we have a name on the second deceased? Not one that I'm releasing at this time. Is he a nine? No. Have you established any orders? Sir? Have you established any orders? That's on the investigation that we've given a uh, varying uh, amount of uh, reports. The firearms that were recovered at these scenes, the firearms that uh, we recovered earlier, uh, they have a way of uh, prosecuting those cases through the federal system. Uh, 
And the best way that I could describe it, you, you, you probably will remember the term, the long arm of the law. They would be working on anything that we asked them to assist us with. Uh, I'm not going to really get into, you know, whether we have gain. We have a, 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 a criminal and a violent criminal problem here. And they are not that organized, but they are that disrespectful for the life of the citizens that's living here in Pine Bluff and the visitors. And, sir, I, I wouldn't characterize it as that. What was uh, the security like at the venue for people getting into uh, the temple? Like, was there pat down? Were there people there? There was some, but it's not what it should have been. Uh, uh, that's one of the things we're going to look at. It could be, I believe it was, yes. Have you officially made a connection between the two shootings? Was one retaliation, was the university for retaliation from the one at the venue? No, there was no connection that we determined. Have you had any previous problems at the, the venue? I don't have any record of it. Uh, have not done any research on that. Is there a city, uh, is there a city code as to how much security uh, needs to be used for a certain number of people that are going to have to stay at home? None that I know of. Was there alcohol served at the temple? I didn't see any evidence of any. Were there it wasn't time, but uh, police department. Were the officers fired on? That's ongoing investigation. Uh, if I made that statement, uh, I couldn't see it with accuracy. And I probably shouldn't <laughs> mention it by to the fraternity because uh, I know I can trust the media, but. It, it's, and I probably should not have. Uh, because, you know, if I had to raise my right hand in court, I, I really couldn't bag it up. Uh, but I've always uh, learned, you know, throughout my career, there, there are some things you can tell the media and they just do the right thing. And, that's the experience that I've always had. Do you know how many people were at this party and, and what kind of were the age ranges? No, I have no idea. Only thing I know for sure is that our officers, uh, detectives, narcotics, they all were there. And uh, I was at both scenes. I, I, I alternated between those two scenes, and I offered my advice, but most of the time they knew what they was doing. You know, all I had to do is watch, uh, make sure that our uh, personnel uh, dispatch from one scene to the other scene. And I think the citizen, if, if they experienced and saw what I saw, you know, they would understand what it means to be proud to supervise officers. They, they would sleep real well knowing that they had those type of officers patrolling and investigating crime within the city. It, it's it's something that's hard for me to describe, but I have an excess 33 years of experience, and I've seen some, some really good police work. Where were you stationed? Where was it? As far as supervising in the United States, at the scene. The scene at Sahara? 
at both scenes. I left one, went to the other, and then I came back to the other one, and then I uh, rode around the city to see what was going on. Were any officers injured during any of the two exchanges? No, wasn't any. Did the eight people who were shot uh, with the skull shot that you said that's supposed to include the young man uh, who was with you shot by the Wait a minute, say that again. The eight people that were discovered shot at the Savannah Temple, did that include the officer, did that include the young man that was uh, shot uh, by the police officer? Allegedly, yes, yes. There were a lot of activities going on all night because of homecoming. Did the Commonwealth PD have any help from other agencies before the run up to the uh, two shooting events? We had uh, the sheriff's office have, have been assisting, as they have before. Uh, there have been cases where we've had emergencies in this town. We've had officers come out of Whitehall, Redfield, uh, to, to assist. State police? State police, too. But the last thing I'm going to say, and I, I probably said it before, uh, Mayor, for you and City Council, we have a good force here. They don't make excuses, and I don't take excuses. We're going to do this, and I push hard, but we're going to make this city safe.